Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is YouTube Can Be Great. I have been quite a while. I've been gone for a while. If you guys are paying attention, I have to have surgery. I was fortunate. Baby, I had a myomectomy instead of a hysterectomy. I was told that it was going to be a possible hysterectomy because I had four fibroids. The biggest was the size of a cantaloupe. The smallest was a size, according to them, I think of a half a baby's head is what they told me. And I have four of those things around my uterus, around my ovaries. And it was an issue. Before I even went into surgery, they were telling me that it was going to be a major surgery. It's worse than having an actual baby. They gave me a complete C-section cut on my stomach. I was in bed in the hospital for about four days. I had to take meds. I couldn't walk. I did all those things that I had to do to get better. But I've been able to move better now. I'm not completely healed. I still have uh, pain in my lower in my abdomen area is still swollen. It feels like rubber almost because you poke it, it kind of wobbles because apparently my muscles still need to um, connect. I still have the stitch closing. I'm still kind of recuperating, but I'm doing it from home. And because I'm able to move a little bit, just a little bit, I can't really move around for a long time. After like an hour, I feel like I just ran a marathon. So, um, but thank you guys to those of you who sent your, um, who sent your support. I really appreciate it. And that's why I'm here to give you guys this review. Okay, so let's get into it. Marriage Bootcamp Reality Stars Season 17 Episode 8 Hip Hop Edition Break the Cycle. And I felt like breaking doc the screen when Dr. Ish's face kept popping up on my screen because I was very disappointed in him. And I'm going to tell y'all why because I think that this is a load of crap. Now, we start off where we left off last episode with Corrupt pretending to fight with Tony, blaming it on her because all the red liquor or all the um, the hard liquor had been removed from the house. All that was left was beer. So he did through this entire tantrum talking about I have to get away from her, I have to get away from her, acting like he was so scared when we all knew that he wanted to go to a hotel so he can do whatever the hell he want, get access to the alcohol he needs, and then blame it on Tony because that's what addicts do. So... They let them go, and then uh, as they're as he's leaving, Tahiri's on the stairs giving Tony advice. I said this in the first episode, I think, or the second episode, and I said it again. Tahiri is in no place to be giving anybody advice about their relationships. I don't care. Uh, you know, I'm a Tahiri fan too. I think she's beautiful. I like her as you know her her as a person, but I also see parts of her that are still broken and things that she still has to learn in her 40s. So I don't believe that she needs to be giving anybody advice ever when it comes to relationship. But here she is talking to Tony on the stairs like she was doing with Phaedra. And they, they were both, to me, I was like, you know, I, I don't even listen at that point. Then, mentally ill. I want to say mentally ill because I don't want to offend anybody who has a mentally ill person in their family. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use a different word. Delusional Dr. Ish has succeeded now in using reverse psychology to convince Tahiri and the house that Vado is entirely at fault and that altercation or that little mishap that occurred between Tahiri and Vado that it's all Vado's fault and that Tahiri has no stake in this she has no blame in this whatsoever and that's the problem why I was so irritated this entire episode because I felt like it was just dragged out so they asked Tahiri, uh, Judge Lynn told her goes to Tahiri and says, they ask her if she wants a Vado back in the house because they're afraid that she might be scared for her life. Tahiri says, no, I want him back. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. You know, I don't, I'm not afraid of him. I was never afraid of him. Da, 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 da. They kept going. Oh, we're going to make sure that he's never alone with you. Oh, we're going to make sure that we have guards around when he's there. And I'm like, who's going to guard him when she's around? And, I, and now people in my comments did say, because I read some of your comments and there were a couple of people that says, oh, one person said, oh, blame the woman, right? And another person said something like, oh, it's never okay for a man to put his hands on a woman. I agree that it is never okay for a man to put his hands on a woman, but let's be clear. I'm African, maybe because I'm multicultural, I have a difference of opinion, because I know in this country, there's the running theme in a lot of places that gives a lot of leeway to women to have them do stupid things. I know that in this system, when a woman puts their hand on a man, it's not looked at with the same severity as if a, when a man puts their hand on a woman. In this system, when a woman is raped, it's not, it's not looked at with the same severity as when a man is, is, is raped. It's like they don't even comprehend that that's something that could ever happen, right? Then in this system, when it, uh, a, in the case of a separation or a divorce, the woman gets the child as full custody most of the time and she gets to go to child support to the man. And it's some, a lot of times now, at least at least I would say about 80% of the time is it's done out of revenge or anger and it becomes an issue where the women start using the kids as pawns and the system ignores it because they just want their cut, right? Where I'm from or my culture, there are some women, the way that they behave. 
that if a man were to do something to them or react or reciprocate or reciprocate that same aggression, everybody in town has watched that woman, has watched the behavior and then would say, this woman deserves to learn a lesson. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. In the case of Tahiri, she threw those apples. These are apples, y'all. Not, not to, you know, toilet paper or tissue or something soft. She threw two hard apples to this man in his face. And that's after she had several things that she said about, that was disrespectful. Now, Vado had several things that he said about her that's disrespectful, like calling her thirst bucket and stuff like that. But if it's a game of words, I can understand his resistance to keep your hands to yourself. Y'all can just tongue tussle to the end. But when she threw those apples, it was almost like she's inviting something, right? Now, I have to go back in my head and think, you know, what's Tahiri's character like from what I have seen while she's been on reality TV? I remember her throwing, using the, the pillowcase, like I said before, when her and Joe were arguing about that piece of hair she found in the bed and she found lipstick and makeup on the sheets. She, he, she used that sheet and she smacked him with it. What if he picked up the sheets and smacked her with it too? The internet, the media would go crazy. Then in that same love and hip hop season in the reunion, Rabbit Teeth or Beaver Teeth Consequence had a problem with Joe Budden. And in the after show, I think we went on commercial, they were still coming out. Consequence uh, sucker punched Joe Budden from behind. Sihiri was behind Consequence. If y'all watch the clip again, okay, she punched Consequence because Consequence punched jo um, Joe Budden. Joe Budden and Consequence are two men. If they're going to fist fight, Women are not supposed to interfere in two grown-ass men fighting. Tahiri punched Consequence. When Consequence wasn't even paying attention, she was behind him. She socked him while they were pulling him out away from Joe. Now, what would have happened if Consequence turned around and socked the ass back? Then people are going to say, oh, it's never, it's never okay for somebody to da 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 No, I'm watching her entire persona her entire behavior and how she handles herself she's not a soothing calming person that's just you know mel you know uh, you know just mellow and stuff like that and somebody's just beating on her so for me i have a different opinion when it comes to this particular situation and it seems like people are talking about over social media and some people do take my stance okay i'm looking at both she has responsibility to take because she was also physical she just did it with the with prop Hell, it was wet. Those apples were used as weapons, as far as I'm concerned. Now, they go to uh, Vado in the hotel, and Dr. Ish basically tells Vado that he has to or uh, come up with this apology to give Tahiri. And Vado says the one thing that I agree in this entire situation. He talked to his mother, and, the, and he told his mother what he did. His mother said, why would you do that? He told his mother the scenario. His mother said that wasn't a good enough reason. I agree with that because I feel like as a mother, you give your kid good advice regardless of the circumstances they're in. As a mother, if I had a son, I would give him the advice no matter what. I would prefer you walk away from the situation or leave the house. That way, I don't find your ass in jail and have to bail you out and see your future thrown away. I'd rather you just do that and leave the relationship than retaliate, even if I feel like the individual needed to you know, have a, sh have a shock to their system to understand that their behavior is unacceptable. I don't want you, because in this system that you live in, this is what's gonna happen. Vado is, you know, he has, the, he may have some deals that he has where he does like promotions and stuff like that. All his career, what he's worked for could be jeopardized right now because of this particular situation. And Tahiri also has her promotions that she's doing. She's not going to want to admit that she was at fault because she might lose that. So she's now falling into the mentality of let's blame him for everything and not take part, or, you know, my part in what I did. It doesn't mean that you deserve to be hit. Nobody deserves to be hit by anybody. But let's be clear, when you do something wrong, two wrongs don't make it right. And both of you were wrong. So it shouldn't be just him being treated like he's just this angry black man. When she said herself that she he had never put his hands on her in any way, shape, or form in over 10 years. That speaks volumes to me. So all this, let's get security, make sure they're not in the same room alone, make sure they're sitting so wide. What do you think he's going to do? It's almost the image that they're portraying that this is another crazy black man that's going to be out there, just out there abusing people. I don't agree with that at all. Then we go to, uh, we do a corrupt again. Corrupt comes back the next day after he didn't got his fix. Dr. Ish goes to talk to him and lets him know that he doesn't need marriage boot camp. He needs alcohol rehabilitation and asks him if he's willing to go that they would drive him there. Of course, Corrupt is not going to want to go because he made it very clear two episodes ago that he would not stop drinking. He doesn't care how much he's hurting Tony. He doesn't care how much he's hurting his health. He doesn't care the fact that he has family members. He doesn't care that he had grandkids. He will keep drinking because that's what he wants to do. Okay? Like an addict. 
And then, so they send him away. Then uh, Dr. Judge, uh, Judge goes to uh, Dr. Lynn Toller or Judge Lynn Toller goes to Tony and then tells Tony that there's nothing she can do. She can get here because Tony is willing to basically enable his behavior by staying with him when he refuses to change. When she has her own family and her own children in Vegas that she can go and stay with until he decides to fix himself or she can move on and find somebody better. Then uh, we decide to get into, finally get into what this particular I guess episode is about they have to revisit their past via psychotherapy to do so they had them all illustrate two unhappy memories on a, on a play car and then that play card they got to draw what it is of uh, the memories that are talking about the ones i picked out specifically that got to me was medina saying that his mother was schizophrenic and she tried to sell his brother in a mall i know somebody whose mother's schizophrenic and a friend of mine and i believe medina's story to its entirety because my friend of mine was in, you know, walking down the street and he literally walked past his mother and she didn't recognize him because she was gone. She didn't even know. He was like, mom, mom, <laughs> nothing. I'm not familiar with how the, how the mental illness uh, works, but I do know that it's, if you have a schizophrenic parent, it's crazy. I think they illustrated a schizophrenic parent too in, in um, Empire. With, I think Lucius Lyons, mo Lucius Lyons' mother was supposed to be schizophrenic. I'm not sure, but let me know. Because she was trying to drown him in the bathtub or something at some point. Then another one that got to me is Phaedra's grandfather. I guess Phaedra's grandfather is so light that he could pass his white. And so when he would walk around with her in town, they called her the little Ed baby. I hope Phaedra's father had hands. Because I would end up going to jail for beating up people. How dare you? disrespectful then uh hazel brought up her situation saying that she was used to having her mom being abusive relationships and she was privy to it they'll beat the mom and when she tried to defend the mom they'll beat her too now those were the three that stuck out to me because i felt like for me that's the one that touched me maybe to you it was something different now devon in the confessional said something he said he didn't mind visiting his childhood and hazel run up by the mouth being disrespectful again yeah because it wasn't so long ago this is what i'm talking about some of, why are you talking to this dude like that you want to be with him you're having sex with him but you're calling him a child hazel what does that make you because you're constantly reminding him of how young he is to you how young he is to you it makes me think that maybe you feel like something's wrong with you and you're making him feel bad for the decisions that you made the guy just wanted to love you he's 25 he's still got you know most men don't get good in their life so you know early 30s or mid 30s you know so maybe 40s they need time to get themselves together. You have chosen to date him in the age when he's still growing. You need to accept him for who he is or leave him alone. Stop bringing him down. You're going to do a number of that poor baby. Now, um, Tahiri's on the confessional talking about how she keeps, uh, how she keep, uh, uh, how she hopes that hey, uh, Vado learned his lesson. I was like, girl, shut up. Then they get to her and they had asked her um, about her little traumatic event. Tahiri continues to capitalize on this situation with Vado, saying that a man she knew forever punched her in her face and her ribs. Now, whatever that man, whoever that man was and him doing all that, I don't know what the story is. But for me, anybody about to punch me in my face on my ribs, that's just not going to happen. So I'm not going to speak on that. If that was her experience and that was she recalls, I understand and I empathize with her because it's just not okay for anybody to have to go through that. But considering what I'm seeing with her behavior when it comes to Vado and her not taking any responsibility, it irks me. It irks me. Every time she opens her mouth, I'm just it irritating me right now because I feel like She's just not trying to take responsibility for nothing. Joe Budden did a pot, you know, in his little radio show or podcast, whatever it was, he touched on the subject. Of course, he wants to make sure he keeps his job and he keeps his show. So he vaguely said she threw those apples. She should have never done that. But he wanted to go with what the, the narrative is in media, what it is in this in this culture. He kept pointing out about it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But he vaguely touched on that. Letting her know that she has a she has a part to play in this. Then they bring out the kids. Uh, each kid is now basically showing them a mirror of what they wrote on that car by re by re uh, restate, restating everything that they put on the car and having them give the kids advice on what they should have done for themselves. Almost like seeing your you know seeing what you look like in the other mirror. And that was you know I guess it works for some people maybe. Then Vado comes to apologize because he wants to now make good with everything and make sure he gets his conscience clear. I skipped it. I was pissed off. I didn't want to see that shit. Dr. Ish then decides to uh, tell him you're, you're still in the doghouse. You're going back to the hotel as if it's some danger to society. Dr. Ish needs to get cussed out. I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing for that. He needs to get cussed out. Then we get to Hazel E and Devon after the end of the, the, the show. 
Hazel is now teasing Devon by way of disrespect. You just want, you know, you, you just want a sugar mama. You just want a sugar mama Hazel. And as she's saying, she goes, I just think that he just wants to be with Hazel E, baby. He just wants to be with Hazel E. Hazel, I think you're feeling yourself too much because I don't want to be with you. I'm watching you on this show. I'm looking at how you're behaving. I'm looking at how you're treating this guy. And I'm look, I checked your, uh, your worth and he was like 400K. Girl, knock it off. Knock it off. This boy is not thirsty to get stuff out of you. You chose him in his life when he doesn't have much. At 25, he's not going to have nothing. So you should expect that you'll be helping him more out because you've had time to build your life. But stop putting him down for the way God made him. He made him 10, 15 years younger than you. Get over it. But now Devon is getting pissed off because now he's feeling like he's being talked to any old kind of way. Because she's taking every chance she has to emasculate him. He said something about entitlement or what. These are the word he used at the end of the show in his confessional. And Hazel was like, don't use it. You don't even know what it means. And he's still learning. She was like, he was like, well, I, you know, if I don't know what it means, that's cool. But, you know, I don't need to. It sounds like a word I'm not. It's like a defense mechanism now. Like, why are you telling him all the things he doesn't know? If you're going to keep doing that, that's an insecurity for you because you feel too old. In that case, let him go. Because Devon is like, we won't end up alone because I'm not going to tolerate this BS. Don't talk to me that way. I'm young, but I'm not about to. I'm still a man. Either you let me be in your life the way I'm supposed to. Or fuck off. They did have a miscarriage, I know, in this season. But I do know that since then, they've had a child. So I'm hoping by then, there's some maturity that's occurred at both ends to where she talks to him better. I don't know. Next week, they're supposed to have this lie detector test thing going on. Apparently, three people are lying. I want to know who those three are. I'm also going to do a review of Real Housewives of Potomac because I didn't caught up on all four seasons. I'm on season five. That is the only one outside of Real Housewives of Atlanta that I will watch. I would say that it's like the bougie version of Real Housewives, okay, of Atlanta. It's like the bougie version. Atlanta's a little bit more ghetto compared to what's going on with these girls. But I'm going to talk about it because I have some, you know, characters I really, you know, I vibe with and something that's pretty crazy. But I'm going to talk about it, okay? You guys have a good evening. Thank you so much for your support. And I hope to keep doing this for you um, more and more as more shows come out since we're slowly getting back to the norm with this whole COVID situation. This whole election coming up, oh, stressful. I don't know. It just seems like I, I don't know if I wanted to be born in this generation, child, because this is a mess. Anyway, have a wonderful evening. Bye.